Whether you hit your target score, whether it be 700 plus, 750 plus, or even a perfect score of 800, whether you hit that score or not is dependent upon how well you have mastered the concepts. And while they are on the way to mastering all these concepts, they always come across having this question. And that is, John, I am studying the concepts right now and I feel pretty good about them, but how do I know? How do I know if I have truly mastered that concept? How do I know if I need to spend more time here or I can just move on to the next concept? What is that fine line? And that's exactly what this video is all about. I'm going to show you two ways in which you can test yourself on whether you have mastered a concept or you need to spend more time on it. And this is very important because if you move on to the next concept without having mastered that concept, then you're going to get that question wrong when they show up on the SAT. However, if you're spending way too much time on just that one specific concept, then you're never going to finish studying for the SAT. So if you're studying for the SAT right now, then go down below, smash the like button, and let's get started with today's video. So I like to think that there are about two ways to check whether you have mastered a concept. And one way to do it is by asking yourself, how quickly can I say it? What I mean by that is if I ask you, what is one plus one? It's two. What's two plus two? It's four. It comes out like almost naturally. You don't even have to think about it. And the only reason you can do it so quickly is because you got the concept of addition down. So let's say you're studying for the SAT right now. And let's say you are currently on the quadratics chapter. And to check whether you have mastered that concept, I might walk up to you and ask, hey, how do you find discriminants? Well, it's B squared minus 4AC. Well, what are the two usages of discriminants? Well, first, do you use it to find the number of roots or x-intercepts in a quadratic function? Or you also use it to find the number of intersections between a line and a parabola? And if you can say all that without having too much trouble coming up with the answers or thinking like 10, 15, 20 seconds to come up with an answer, if you can come out with it pretty quickly, that tells me that, oh, you are good with the concepts, you are ready to move on to the next one. However, if I walk up to you and ask, how do you find discriminant? And you're like, hmm. Hmm. Minus B over 2A. Well, first of all, you don't look confident with your answer, which is a big, big red flag. And second of all, that took a lot longer than it actually should have. What I mean by that is you don't have to come up with the answer like half a second after I ask you the question. No, you don't have to be that quick. I mean, it's going to help, but it's not necessary to get a high score on the SAT. However, what you do want is to get the answer within three seconds. If I ask you a question or if you ask yourself a question about the concept and you can come up with the answer in a matter of just three seconds, you are in a good spot. Well, you obviously want to try to bring that number down, but three seconds, that means you are in a pretty good shape. And do you remember the red flag that I mentioned earlier? Yeah, it's the confidence. See, confidence is the second way to check whether you have really truly have mastered the concept. Because if you know what you're talking about, if you have truly mastered the concept, then you should be confident with your answer. So if I ask you, hey, what is one plus one? It's two. Well, are you sure that it's two? Are you sure that two is the right answer? Are you sure it's not three or four or five or 6,000? And if I keep on double checking your answer, you'll probably think, that's weird. Like one plus one is two. Like what else can it be? Like I'm 100% confident that one plus one is two. Well, the only reason you can say that is because you have mastered addition. Hopefully you have mastered addition. You know how addition works. That's why you can confidently say one plus one is equal to two and I can bet my life on it. But let me ask you this. How do you find the number of intersections between a line and a parabola? Oh, did you say discriminants? Mm, discriminants. Are you sure it's discriminants? Are you sure it's not matching rule or other things that you have learned in the past? Are you sure it's discriminants? Can you bet your life on that it is going to be discriminants? Because if you're wrong, I'm going to smack. If you have truly mastered the concepts and you know discriminants, like you know one plus one is equal to two, then you're going to say, yes, discriminants, I can bet my life on it. That's the right thing to do. In order for you to truly hit your target score of 700 plus, 750 plus, or even 800, you have to make sure that you are super 110% confident with all the concepts to the point where you can just bet your life on it. And you need to make sure that these things come out really quickly. So whenever you're studying for the SAT and wondering whether you have truly mastered the concept or not, ask yourself those two questions. However, if it takes you like 10, 15, 20 seconds to come up with an answer and you're not even confident with that answer, 
chances are you haven't mastered those concepts yet and you probably should go back to the lectures, the summaries, and the practice sets. Because if you just brush them under the rug and tell yourself, ah, what are the chances of those concepts showing up on the SAT? Well, they're gonna show up. And when they do show up, you're not gonna know how to solve them. And you're gonna get those questions wrong, you're gonna get a lower score and not reach your target score. And the first five weeks of the program is where you truly master those concepts. And you wanna make sure you don't slack there because once you start cutting corners there, you're gonna pay for it later during week six and during your actual SAT. So whenever you're learning concepts, make sure you get them right the first time around. So that's going to be it. If you guys have found this video helpful, make sure you give a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And I'll see you on the next video.